Ladies and gentlemen, natural disasters are unfortunately now becoming a real human tragedy. Unfortunately, far too common, essentially due to climate change. Rise in temperature, the polar shields melting, extreme weather condition, torrid heat waves, massive floodings, severe droughts, are just to name a few. And climate change, in fact, will remain one of the main challenges government of all countries, whether advanced or developing, will have to face now and in the future to come. In fact, what is at stake is a very foundation of our present civilization. We are faced with a ticking time bomb which nobody can ignore. It is an existential threat for millions in all regions of the world. Let me be candid. During the last few years, at least, there is consensus that there is a real problem. We generally agree that measures should be taken. We know what we should all do. There is no time for dilly-dallying. In the face of those challenges, we need concerted actions, bold and concrete measures now. It is also imperative that proper mechanism be designed so that countries the most vulnerable, especially small island developing states, the African continent, among others, get access to technical, technical and financial assistance in a timely manner to implement projects for adaptation and mitigation. My earnest hope is that under the leadership of the UAE, when we all meet here during the court of this year, things really start to move. Another ongoing challenge, ladies and gentlemen, compounded by COVID-19 and the war between Russia and Ukraine, is the need for us to diversify our food supplies. This is a lesson we have learned. We need also to explore alternative sources of energy, we know inflation has risen. There is greater inequality. But there is a silver lining. It is today confirmed that our fate, the fate of all of one, all of us, is interlinked and we are all interdependent. And in fact, we arrive today that whatever we have been saying, that we are in a village, a global village, is proved. And it is for us, together, to try to find solutions to those challenges. The African continent can be part of the solution. The, African, the African, uh, Africans, the, the different uh, countries within Africa can also be a game changer. 
abundance of solar energy, large stretches of fertile land, and they can help to actually attenuate future crises, both in the continent itself and also globally. But delivering on Africa's development, pursuing this vision will require the continued, continued support of all its esteemed partners. And as the world is recovering from COVID-19, the well-being and growth of the human element should continue to remain at the center of our focus. And in order to address this serious concern and create the right economic e ecosystem to boost prosperity, we need to focus on three main areas. Inclusive economic growth, investments in people, health, and education, and ensuring against risks that can plunge the most vulnerable into poverty. Economic growth remains the, black the backbone of our shared prosperity, where quality leadership and good governance are more than ever crucial. Our responsibilities as leaders is to ensure, firstly, government remain transparent and fully engage with citizens. Secondly, there is sufficient investment to ensure that people are given all opportunities to reach their full potential. And lastly, proper business environments are created to encourage innovation and competition with government and private sectors working in tandem for a sustainable economic growth. One last challenge, ladies and gentlemen, over which I wish to highlight this afternoon is regarding technology. The world today is increasingly connected digitally. The take-up of the internet since mid-90s has now become transactional. Further technical, technological breakthrough in terms of fintech, blockchain, etc. We cannot ignore, and in fact, we acknowledge that those technologies have proved most useful during the COVID-19 pandemic. And in fact, the use of all those technologies have been accelerated. And we are grateful that we did have all those technologies. And this helped to a certain extent that countries kept moving. In the same vein, we had the dazzling rise of multinational corporations the creation of social media. We are able to communicate and get better informed. But unfortunately, also, there have been some unintended consequences with hate speeches, cyber threats, fake news. But today, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, there is, we are the dawn of the birth of another virtual creator, a creature. The emergence of the so-called chat GPT. Artificial intelligence is now 
becoming very topical. But it is a cocktail with previous technology, technological development compounded with AI. The whole landscape is going to be transformed economically, socially, politically. There will be an overall of all those fabrics. We should also accept that the cyberspace is going invariably to be more and more present in all areas of our daily life. But do we sufficiently know and understand the, the whole ecosystem? Should we not be proactive? On one side, learn to draw maximum benefits of technology, but also avoid all its pitfalls. Therefore, it is my earnest wish that we all engaged, get engaged in a profound reflection. All of us, world leaders in our own rights, in different fields, let us work, work together, chart out the necessary regulatory and legislative safeguards, frameworks, and check and imbalances which need to be put into place. In fact, we have been overwhelmed since the last 20 years. We were taken, perhaps, by surprise. We did not realize the extent to which all those technology will enter into our daily life, but there is more to come. We are now in a virtual and a physical world interacting constantly. This is a new reality, but we should be able to understand and make a seamless transition and, co and, and cohabitate within these two worlds together. Ladies and gentlemen, I now come to the last part of my intervention, and I'll uh, talk about my own country, Mauritius, which you know is a small island developing state in the Indian Ocean, but which is part of the African continent, with which Mauritius is fully integrated. When we all know what is the immense opportunities that the African continent represents as being by far the world's youngest continent with vast natural resources still unexploited, Africa can be a key partner and driver of economic growth and development for the world in years to come especially once the African continental free trade area is fully implemented. But it is good also, ladies and gentlemen, to realize that after 60 years of independence all over Africa, Africa is ready for a leapfrogging, both in terms of new technology like renewable or ICT, but the whole continent has also matured. We have learned from mistakes, ready to learn and emulate success stories. Africans know their priorities, the importance of developing its infrastructure, diversification of its economy, 
We firmly believe in cooperation, regional integration. We wish to boost trade, inter-African trade, and trade with outside Africa and the region. There is also a new breed of leaders which realize that they are accountable and realize that we are no more in an era of instability and impunity. And I have got great hope for the whole continent. And as I said, Mauritius is just part of this continent. Mauritius has had its independence. Some, uh, we are celebrating this year 55 years of independence. We are blessed that we have had all throughout political stability. And our stability, ladies and gentlemen, is not based on individuals. Individuals may come and go, but our stability is based on a strong institution. We believe in good governance, respect for fundamental rights, and we have always espoused a high degree of openness and pragmatism. In terms of our attitude and culture, our policy, our economic strategy, and our diplomacy. And because of our history, we enjoy a strategic position as a crossroad of Africa and Asia. Some time back, we signed a comprehensive economic cooperation partnership agreement, the SECPA, with India. A free trade agreement has already been signed with China. We are present, presently negotiating one with the UAE. And uh, our transformative journey is ongoing. We wish to embrace innovation-driven industries, robotic AI, at the same time pharmaceuticals. We have also developed our financial center, which is fully compliant with all the recommendations. And we aspire to become a hub and an international player where anyone can aspire for security, stability, good governance, and high value addition. And uh, of course, we welcome and invite financial investment and encourage investors to use Mauritius as a platform to invest in Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, excellencies, I wish now to end by once again congratulating all the leadership of UAE for the, their vision to create the proper eco ecosystem and helping in enhancing the ability of government to implement sustainable development strategies in order to shape a better future for mankind. This summit provides an opportunity for all enlightened leaders to share experience and to help in achieving higher standards of living and well-being for our population. We need concerted action. We all should look in the same direction, collaborate, develop consensus, understand and try to better know each other, understand that we may have different aspirations, but ultimately work for our common good. With these few words, ladies and gentlemen, 
I wish you all well. I wish also the World, World Government Summit 2023 fruitful deliberation. And I thank you all for your kind attention. Thank you.